hello students uh, is the recording on yes uh, this is the second class of uh, the csir net january 2022 physical science crash course uh, already we have taken our introductory class uh, to review this uh, basic principles of mechanics here uh, we'll be discussing uh, angular momentum uh, and rigid body problems many of you already joined google classroom uh, with this uh, code class joining code uh, if you haven't yet so then please uh, join there we already uploaded the first class video and uh, we uploaded the all the mechanics notes and problem sets uh, there uh, we'll be reviewing uh, as we said uh, angular momentum so this is a pre uh, made slide so well we start uh, first uh, I will be discussing the principle of angular momentum as we know that angular momentum is uh, not actually defined uh, in a always in a circular motion angular momentum is defined always whether it is a circular or uh, linear motion the definition of angular momentum is r cross sorry uh, it seems to be a little bit tilted well r cross p that mean uh, your uh, translation vector is the displacement vector and uh, the linear momentum cross product so the first example is if a particle is uh, moving in a straight line with a velocity p that mean with a linear momentum p and the distance uh, above the x axis is h uh, distance above the x axis is h so what will be its uh, angular momentum somebody you might you might think that uh, this is a translation motion where the angular momentum is coming so you're getting wrong because the translation motion is not along the axis so it have a distance there so your r is pointing in this way and v is pointing in this way so r and p is not in the same direction so if you take a cross product so you get if we define the z axis along uh, r x cross y so this will be inside the page into the page no sorry uh, coming out of the page and if you take a cross product of r cross p r vector this side p vector this side so cross producting going into the page uh, so this will be a minus z and the cross product rule will give you minus r p sine theta and that r sine theta this r and this sine theta according to the definition of uh, sine theta this will be h this will be h so the angular momentum will be mvh it's a general rule if a particle traveling in a straight line and the distance from the axis uh, is h so the angular momentum is mvh so we will apply it in many problems so in general uh, it's a theorem you can prove that uh, the total angular momentum of a rigid body is uh, angular momentum of the com of course taking uh, taking the whole rigid body as a point particle so angular momentum of the com plus angular momentum about the com so the application of that theorem uh, will be there so this is uh, a rigid body sphere so you can take it as uh, mass m and radius a this is rolling without slipping uh, in axis so how to calculate the angular momentum of this sphere so we'll take a uh, whole sphere as a point particle concentrated on uh, this uh, center of mass so this is traveling with velocity v uh, above the axis the distance is a so the angular momentum of the particle uh, this is uh, of the center of mass is mva plus angular momentum about the center of mass because about the center of mass it's rotating whole sphere that is i omega so if you don't know all this so then your basic uh, mechanics is very weak so you can start with my note or with a good book say start with uh, hc verma to get this basic concepts right or you directly uh, start with klepner and kolenko so that i omega will be the angular momentum about the COM. So this MPA is uh, angular momentum of the 
CoA according to this formulation plus that I rigid sphere 2 by 5 m square and omega for rolling without slipping omega is V by A. So that will be 7 by 5 m V A. This is a very standard problem. So you need to get used to all this because you need to apply in little bit more complex problems. Uh, if you just go to the kinetic energy, then the same thing, kinetic energy of the center of mass plus kinetic energy above about COM. So the center of mass kinetic energy will be half of mv square plus about COM is half of I omega square. So the same thing, omega is V by A, that square, I is this. So just add this, you get 7 by 10 mv square. So, uh, these are the some basic revisions of uh, the circular momentum formulation. So, let us uh, do something else. Well, uh, this is a center of mass calculation. Uh, you, there is a trick. So, that is why I decided to have this in the slide. Uh, we will apply all these formulations later in this class after we discuss that particular problem. So here, uh, as you see, the we have a homogeneous semicircular plate of radius r equals to 3m, as shown in the figure. The distance of the COM, uh, where, where will be the COM is? So that is a, a semicircular plate of 3m. So uh, center of mass is a vector. Uh, you don't forget it. So that R is uh, in a two-dimensional plane, it's two-dimensional uh, problems. We write R as uh, Ix plus Jy and my definition of center of mass is uh, this Mi Ri, R as a vector summation by Mi. So for continuous problem, we have an integration. So for the basic rule is uh, you just separately find x coordinate and y coordinate of the center of mass then uh, you just add this where you need to be very careful when there are no particular spherical and cylindrical symmetry here if it had been a total circle or total sphere or total cylinder then there is a symmetry but here it's a half so there is no particular symmetry so if you calculate, if you think about the x coordinate, so x coordinate is definitely at zero because there is a symmetry in x direction that total that half this side and half that side. So that just gives you the, your x is zero, and your y you need to calculate. How do you calculate y? We calculate. Uh, this is little bit of uh, messy. No, not messy. Man, just have a little bit joke. So, y coordinate is y dm by dm uh, integration, uh, just uh, the extension of this sum. So, this is the integration. Now, uh, for polar two dimension, you need to substitute this y is r sin theta and dm as uh, sigma r dr d theta. So, this dm is nothing but uh, the sigma is your mass density and that r d r d theta is your uh, area element in two dimension as we always see this is r this is dr and if this is d theta so this area element is r dr d theta so this s is r d theta so this multiplied by this into dimension. So, after we put this, then we take the integration. So, that you may have a pause on the right now on the video and calculate, uh, do all the calculation and you get this, your y coordinate will be uh, 4r by 3 pi. Then uh, your r is uh, given as 3, so your y coordinate will be 4 by pi. So, that is uh, one example and one uh, very common mistakes, so that's why I discussed it here. Let's go to apply the some conservation of momentum, angular momentum efficiently. 
well um, uh, first we calculate a moment of inertia thing um, with a hole um, with a gap so what will be this uh, let's add the uh, to y have you know 110 104 is fine so uh, here in this problem all these are previous years problem but you need to uh, do all uh, this calculations because these are very important problems which are generally asked so and this has an equivalence in electrostatics also so the moment of inertia of a uniform uh, sphere this is a uniform sphere of radius r is given by this that you know you may be told or you you may not told that 2 pi 2 by 5 uh, m r square that m is uh, written like this 4 by 3 that is the volume r to the power 5 rho r q is the volume and r square is coming as r to the power 5 rho is mass density uh, then our digit sphere uh, has two smaller sphere of radius r by 2 cut on it so just in the image r by 2 and r by 2 is a cut out from the sphere so then what will be the moment of inertia of this so what you need to calculate here is uh, First, you need uh, to assume that say there is no hole. So, what will be the moment of inertia then? Then you separately calculate the moment of inertia of that hole, both holes. Uh, but remember that moment of inertia should be calculated along the same axis, which means uh, this point, the axis which is going through the center. Uh, then you subtract it. So, first that will be 2 by 5 mr square. There are two sphere, that's why this two comes, and uh, each of them have a moment of inertia along their their axis of symmetry, which means this point and this point. That will be two by five. The mass will be m by eight because as the total mass you have taken as m, you could have calculated with rho also, but that is easier to calculate with m. But because that is very you know, obvious that. If you have reduced the radius by half, then your mass is reduced by 1 by 8 because of this r cube. So, its radius mass has uh, decreased to m by 8, radius is r by 2 square plus, plus this is uh, parallel axis theorem. We have shifted, we have shifted from this point to that point. So my shift is r by 2. So the parallel axis theorem is giving that total mass uh, into r square. That shift, uh, each moment of inertia of each of that, we have two sphere, two holes. So that's why this two come and then we calculate. So in this way, we calculate moment of inertia of any problem with a hole on there. This have a equivalence in electrostatic problem. So we will discuss it when we discuss electrostatics. This is one problem. Uh, this is another type of problem where there is a combination of translation and uh, rotation both comes. This is a, also a old uh, problem. So what the problem is, this type of problem are very common but very misunderstood uh, by you people. So, you see the problem uh, before you may pause or read the problem uh, or just to go through the image. The, there is no gravity etc. This is a horizontal plane. There is a rod kind of thing with a mass m and uh, length l. Its center is here uh, and uh, this h uh, is above the axis distance. Some mass, uh, this is also of mass m is coming with uh, velocity v naught and just stuck with a doom then what happens then both this particle both this uh, mass m and both this uh, your rod moves this rod will have uh, a rotation also together with the translation why it should be because as you know respect to that axis the mass has a distance h so this mass have an angular momentum which is m v naught h m v naught h uh, so that angular momentum will make this rotate this problem has been made little simpler 
to you because uh, this both the velocity has given as v so the linear velocity of your rod is v uh, and linear velocity of that mass after the strike is also v uh, this uh, rod is rotating with a uh, angular velocity omega with respect to this axis of symmetry means this uh, axis so this axis horizontal distance does not change now, this side there is no movement because this side there is no momentum transformation so then you can just uh, read the statement of the problem uh, what uh, momentum inertia is also given it asked that uh, what the distance of h must be this h is unknown here so we need to find h with respect to this uh, v and omega it could have been other ways also h was given and it could have asked to find this v with respect to h etc so this type of problem this is one problem but that can be many type of problem generated uh, by this type of formulation so uh, you need to calculate uh, you need to apply the conservation of momentum and conservation of linear mom uh, angular momentum both so how do you calculate it mm, uh, if there is a caution to you that uh, if the uh, we always we told it earlier also if the particle got stuck together then the collision would have been elastic in nature but if it does not stuck the collision may or may not be elastic there will be mentioned see uh, now the traveling mass m collides elastically if the collision is elastic then it would be properly mentioned in the problem this is usual practice otherwise you won't be able to apply the kinetic energy conservation so here uh, what we see is uh, let's have a momentum conservation initial momentum was mv not that is the only source of momentum after the collision this body this rod have a linear velocity v so that is mv this mass have a linear velocity v so that is mv so mv not equals to mv plus mv uh, angular momentum this have a angular momentum in v not h uh, now after the collision this particle did not displace in h direction it should not be as there is no momentum in this no force in this direction so this have a mvh after because the velocity has changed so this is have mvh there and i omega of course this is this rod is rotating as omega now with angular velocity omega so this have uh, an angular momentum i omega with respect to the same uh, axis so here we go angular momentum kinetic energy you know so that is a very beautiful problem in one single problem you apply all this initial kinetic energy would have been half of m v not square final kinetic energy half of m v square for that particle half of m v square for the from the translational motion of the rod plus from the rotation of the rod uh, with respect to this axis is half of i omega square remember to calculate this i as uh, according to this axis as we calculated angular momentum and kinetic energy all according to this axis so there will be 1 by 12 uh, in the square and omega square so then you are done uh, we calculated here no so then you are done uh, do it okay uh, next we uh, go to another type of problem which will uh, which will uh, hmm, contain the thrust or some like a cricket bat ball type of problem uh, there are many types of problem we cannot discuss everything there so i decided to discuss one two problems and i have we have a problem set so please uh, solve that we may have a different all other type of problems in the book but we have very less time so what we will do is what we must do here we have uh, like uh, a raw a bar type of thing uh, which is stuck with here but not 100% fixed that means that the pivot point will be this like how you uh, just uh, grip a cricket bat imagine you with a cricket bat here so your hand position is fixed but the bat can bend like a pivotal point 
then uh, we have a momentum transformation here uh, after the length a from the axis like boom uh, just like a cricket ball is coming and attacking the total momentum this problem is given as uh, with respect to momentum transformation this is j uh, then after the thrust it goes uh, this cricket bat goes with a linear velocity uh, that is of course angular velocity omega l by 2 the center of mass uh, moment of inertia is ml square by 3 with respect to a uh, this is a point a uh, then uh, what do we say that at an instantaneous horizontal impulse is delivered at b a distance a that is this a below this point a what will be the initial angular velocity of the bar that is one thing so in general after a ball strike in a bat you feel a thrust you feel a uh, pinch like in your hand so there will be an impulse j dash that, that is formulated as an impulse on the bar uh, in this uh, axis means in this point a what is j dash let's see what would be the impulse j be delivered sorry what where where would be the impulse j delivered in order to j dash be zero j dash ideally is not zero but yes uh, sorry uh, in realis reality it is not ever zero but yeah in mathematical ideal situation it can be minimized that means in which position you should strike the ball with the bat to get a minimum impact in your hand and to get maximum momentum delivered to the cricket ball again uh, that's a very standard uh, angular momentum problem discussed in almost every good book either in an example or in exercise uh, so how to do it just uh, calculation just application of angular linear momentum and angular momentum uh, but just in terms of j so that's why i took this problem so what we do, we do? just uh, as you see the initial uh, momentum is j so this uh, j a will be the angular momentum this j this is a linear momentum as you say this mvh the same formulation so that j will be the mv this a is the h so this uh, j a is uh, the initial angular momentum and where this angular momentum is going this angular momentum is going uh, to the angular velocity of the bar and as the initial angular velocity was zero so that j a would be that j a your initial angular momentum will be definitely go to the final angular momentum that's uh, very simple so from there we get your omega is j a by i 3 j a by m l square that's uh, your initial velocity initial angular velocity of the bar so then uh, what will be the initial linear velocity of the center of mass that v will be omega l by 2 uh, we have omega so we'll get this the change of the momentum of the bar is definitely uh, it's mv and mv is coming from where this is the linear momentum right so linear momentum is coming from your m omega l by 2 because as the bar is not slipping around the bar is just rotating so the problem is you have a j here so you got j dash there that is not a problem uh, in your hand impulse in your hand uh, it got a linear angular velocity initial angular velocity so it got a linear linear velocity also so then uh, if you got a this linear velocity so then its linear momentum is mv is m omega l by 2 so then we apply the uh, linear momentum conservation that is linear momentum conservation this is angular momentum this is linear momentum we have this j and j dash let's take the same distance doesn't matter 
so opposite direction there so we have j uh, direction does not matter here because j could be this side or that side you take any distance so uh, actually we have taken this uh, j opposite direction actually that's why you have calculated this j dash uh, as positive this side you could have taken negative that side doesn't matter uh, well uh, so the linear impulses actually the difference in the linear impulses is generating the uh, momentum linear momentum of that uh, bar so um, as we see uh, j was the initial momentum j dash will be a final momentum impulse and mv will be the momentum of the bar mv is calculated as m into v and that v is omega l by 2 and we calculated omega from the angular momentum conservation well so that's uh, give us uh, that uh, formula that uh, equation j plus j dash could have been a minus we could have taken no issues uh, that is m omega l by 2 here we get uh, j dash just m omega l by 2 minus j and that is j by 3a by j 2l minus 1 that's easy if we make this j dash 0 to have a minimum impact uh, in your hand so then you get uh, your a is 2l by 3 so the ball should hit at two third distance from your hand uh, means hand to bottom distance if it is l so then ball should hit at two third distance to get a you know, proper transformation of momentum but here we assume that uh, all the bat bat have same density throughout it but in general cricket bat does not have this cricket bat has the density more density in the lower side but well uh, in your childhood you might have played with a cricket bat uh, with a just uh, what to say uh, like a part of wood or something which would have been a uh, same density everywhere still so, this is an ideal problem uh, real problem will be more difficult so these uh, will be the type of problems uh, which are very essential uh, to discuss the angular momentum we did not uh, do a torque problem but torque problems are there in your problem sets i will show you uh, okay then uh, we go to a little bit uh, advanced topic like moment of inertia tensor uh, any book uh, Goldstein, Upadhyay, Kleppner you can read you don't have much time always remember that so you know the moment of inertia what moment of inertia tensor is if you don't then go to the book i discuss a little little bit advanced thing which is similarity transformation type of things there so mathematically uh, you can read similarity transformation from any book like really hops and bends uh, chapter 8 vector space and matrix chapter have a cut there okay so then uh, uh, we will be discussing the physical significance of that diagonalization of moment of inertia tensor uh, so we have a general tensor you can calculate about any axis and according to some axis means if you transform that axis you get uh, diagonalized moment of inertia tensor it is not uh, granted that it always gets but uh, in what the problem we discuss generally we get and we tell this lambda 1 lambda 2 and lambda 3 is our uh, principal moment of inertia so what is principal moments of inertia principal moments of inertia moment of inertia are uh, the moment of inertia according to uh, the principal axis what are the principal axis? Principal axis is a symmetry axis, uh, not necessarily to be your conventional x, y, z, but is a symmetry axis. Symmetry axis that differs from every problem, means every object. If you calculate my moment of inertia, then you get uh, different principal axis. If you get principal moment of inertia of that, uh, we have a green screen back which you don't see it. 
So if we calculate that moment of inertia, we get a different uh, set of axes. We have examples of calculating this moment of inertia uh, and principal axis in e book. But that you get in workout problems. So I'm just telling you a significance. So um, what will be the principal axis? So then if you diagonalize it, uh, the eigenvalues will be your principal moment of inertia and the eigenvectors. The eigenvector of that matrix will be the principal axis. Uh, what is uh, the significance of that? So, if you have say uh, from here to here, if you get the get a set of eigenvectors 1, 1, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, what does it mean? Uh, it means that uh, your uh, axis, your transformation axis should be this. Means if you write it proper normalized form 1 by root 1 by root 0, 1 by root 1 minus 1 by root 0, 0, 0, 1. That means you need to rotate the, this axis uh, 45 degree angle with respect to the z axis. You need to read uh, any similarity transformation matrix and you need to view uh, what would be a similarity transformation after just after looking the matrix. It is not that easy but if you just uh, keep revise some transformation theory in uh, any mathematical physics book you will get it. Otherwise, uh, don't go. If you don't know anything of, of all these things, then uh, you don't go to in detail. But thing is, uh, you always did a similarity transformation. You might not know that, but uh, you did this thing to get. Uh, sorry, sorry. So you always performed this operations when you calculated the diagonalization of a matrix, right? You are given a matrix in your mathematical physics course uh, and you ask to diagonalize. So you calculated that moment of inertia, sorry, you calculated the set of eigenvectors, uh, wrote this eigenvector in a column, formulated this S matrix, then calculated, uh, you calculated this S inverse AS uh, and you called this as uh, your diagonal matrix. So fundamentally and geometrically, this is uh, the axis transformation means uh, the moment of inertia of which was looked or any matrix, uh, not only moment of inertia, this could be a quantum mechanical operator also. So the operator or anything which was in a standard XYZ set of axes, then we transform that operator um, by this transformation S inverse AS. And if your S, that is a theorem, and if your S is calculated uh, with this eigenvectors of that matrix, then this uh, your final matrix Q should be uh, the diagonal matrix. So that is a basis transformation in quantum mechanics. Uh, this process is called we just changed uh, the basis. Uh, how we change the basis? We change the basis in this way. And how we get the operator? We got the operator in this way, like which means we change the basis like S multiplied the basis set with S, then you get the operator as S inverse S. That's the beauty of it. Uh, that's that's the standard theory. So uh, that is I already told you. So then uh, in classical mechanics, uh, sometime you asked uh, to find uh, what will be the moment of inertia according to a particular set of axes or particular direction. Uh, say uh, that problem is also there. So if you uh, are given a particular direction, say 1, 1, 1, then what you need to do? Then you know, according to the theory, you need to perp multiply this uh, original uh, matrix as uh, n uh, and n so n as a row there n as a column there i will give you show you the example don't worry first you need to properly uh, this uh, normalize this n then uh, n as a row and then write as a n as a column then you get a particular scalar that is a from a, a matrix from a tensor to just a scalar this is a 3 cross 3 tensor to scale. So, I will give you an example uh, that uh, came in a previous year exam, uh, which told you that uh, moment of inertia in a rigid body is given like this. 
then uh, what will be the magnitude of the moment of inertia about an axis which is in cap is half root 3 by 2 0 that is a given axis what will be the moment of inertia that will be a scalar so what we will do is uh, we will perform uh, this is already normalized so you don't need to normalize but you will check uh, maybe whether it's normalized or not so we write this as uh, row, ma row matrix uh, this axis then you write the moment of inertia then you write the same direction as a uh, column matrix and then perform that uh, multiplication which will give you the result so this is uh, one type of problem just have a pause on a video uh, calculate uh, the thing then uh, it will be over so well uh, that is the pre built up slide uh, which i wanted to discuss uh, a few problem there this is uh, then i would like to shift to this moment uh, uh, problem solution part we have many problems there so we have many 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 problems uh, you may you may attempt all the problems uh, things will not that be tough this uh, we discussed in the class uh, this will be uh, easier problems so uh, attempt all this attempt all this this might be little bit of difficult problem but you need to think the theory of this problem is there in Klipner and Kolenko. So I need to write there. Okay. So I need to have a blank slide. So we have two problem set. Rigid body one. And we have this as two. I copied it. Okay, we will go fast because we don't have much time. So this is a do or die situation, right? So we have two problems since then. So we'll shift it that. So this one point four no four is fine one point four one point five just look at clip now you get a ebook somewhere on my notes also I think my notes also we discussed the same thing. solutions also are given so that is also discussed first these problems are easy this is conservation of angular momentum problem but this problem will be very interesting and application of this 1.3 will be everywhere in your uh, in Lagrangian Hermitian formulations also you see this problem coming again and again again and again so 1.3 is a must Hmm. So then you after doing this, this is a torque problem. 1.6 is a torque problem. So you remember that torque, right? That torque is R cross F. So calculate the torque properly. If you start with this, right? See the solutions. This is a conceptual thinking you need to think, then just think. Jam problems sometimes are very, very intriguing, it's very interesting to deal with. Uh, so, uh, that is easy. That is the moment of inertia, that is angular momentum calculation problem, but that has similarity with this 1.4, 1.5, that is tiltation, uh, tiltation of axis problem. So, I will show you a little bit. I will give you a little bit idea okay let's see uh, let's change what will be the change of paradigm energy problem that is in d square by r problem 
diameter of earth problem these are fine not a problem at all and this is also a plus two level of problem this is very interesting attempt it if you don't get then look at the solution ask me uh, that you are not getting so we'll, <laughs> we'll see i think the solution will be sufficient then there will be a lots of moment of inertia calculation problem so we already discussed this uh, this is the same same type of problem you can see this is also a same type of problem this is again a same type of problem you see there are lots of moment of inertia problem i have a shorter person also you see again the parallel axis theorem there is these are not whole this is just a application of parallel axis theorem attempt everyone you will just get it you will just love it uh, if you don't get any pleasure of doing problems then there is no need to do the problem but you will feel the pleasure then continue i am there to there to motivate you see all this class are um, bring you motivations in you so if you get motivated do solve uh, some problem get a pleasure then i think my task is done oh, this is uh, this is will be little messy uh, little bit calculation but uh, you'll be able to do it 1.8 is 1.19 is little more calculation little bit calculation you need to do but if you wanted to crack the csi net you need to calculate you need to calculate this is of course an extension your density mass density is here uh, a function of r so then just uh, just integration in a, in integration you need to put this properly and do a proper integration nothing else this is again the mass density is proportional to the distance from the center so integration rho is rho not r you need to put this is again a similar same problem this is again rho is a function of x so you see there is two type of problem in the more moment of inertia calculation one is whole another is just a parallel axis theorem or something the third type will be the mass density will not be constant so see as, as you solve problem keep solving problem you get an idea of what type of problems are asked rotational translation problem will be uh, everything what we discussed uh, will be contained in this the all the concepts are there in this problem what we have discussed so uh, if you understand that discussion properly i think uh, no problem you should be stuck with so every problem this is the same problem asked in jam also so this is we discussed this is tough uh, you need to give a proper thinking 1.28 is think 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 1.28 you need to think it may take some time but just don't go to the solution directly okay then uh, there is an inclined plane problem we know this we already solved this this is the same this pivot point of problem so see one problem if you understand then you will see that there will be repetitions uh, everywhere so again you think this this is a very standard problem you need to just balance the forces 1.31 this is a very 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 important problem because this uh, has been discussed everywhere like the engineer hamiltonian problem uh, and every basic problems in mechanics deal with this uh, some hoop is rotating and inside this uh, hoop or circle or sphere whatever inside this there will be a small bead of particle so you need to just uh, 
uh, you need to just uh, balance the forces you need to take a uh, just uh, in your in your mv square by r your mg and take a balance we have this in our solution but uh, you try to think on this way so this is in a very basic form so just in equilibrium what your theta will be just see in which direction your mv square by r is uh, and how it balances the other forces like um, two other forces mg and this n mm, n is uh, what is capital n yeah <laughs> we discuss all this starting from that friction part right that same end will be everywhere when some particle is standing on or giving a force somewhere. So, well, this, this is, this look like a bit difficult, but this is, just to think on that. Think uh, from that calculation of moment of inertia, what was the moment of inertia for all this hollow and rigid parts. That will be done. Thin rod problem that will be the same concept as we discussed today. Think a little bit. The same conservation of linear and angular momentum will be there. Uh, this is a talk problem. This is actually a AC Verma problem also. AC Verma exercise. When I have seen this. Uh, so you asked in TFA 2016. So this is just. Uh, just you balance the torque 1.34 you just balance the torque there i cannot write on this pdf but torque on that hinge i think in hint we have this told this 1.34 balance the torque in the hinge this is a beautiful problem at this point. So this is very beautiful problem. I always love this. This is a chain problem. <laughs> a picture. <laughs> Think on that. Discuss with your friend, with your friend. What? How? How should be this chain? How should be this chain uh, will go down? In which thing will get up first? <laughs> think, 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 think. This, 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 this is tough. You will, you will do wrong. This you will do wrong. First, when you apply this, you will do wrong. But uh, yeah, think. Why you, after you get it wrong? Tensor key is perfectly fine. After you get wrong, then think why are you getting wrong. The thing is, when passing through the vertical, you may have pause, you may get a pause in this frame and uh, think about it. You do mistake here. When passing through the vertical, the string slips a bit from the people so that its length increases by a small amount in negligible time accommodation of this in length increase uh, will take you in a wrong way so just think about it you need to apply something else here the concern not something else means whatever we discussed will be there so think which should be conserved when the length increases which should be conserved so okay, okay, okay. Mm. Answer key is perfectly fine. This is again a sliding problem, balancing of force problem. You get it. Ah. This is a very standard problem. After some slip, uh, there will be a start of slipping without rotation. So we may get uh, an worked example of this in my notes. Uh, also, you may get it in the solution, but you will need to see the solution of that problem if you don't get it. So try to understand the solution part of this. Okay, okay. So this is what.
insect <laughs> conservation of angular momentum you apply the conservation of angular momentum there so that's uh, the basic angular momentum problem set uh, you work it out and see how you goes so okay then we have another problem set this is uh, smaller where we deal with rigid body problems that moment of inertia principal axis problem this is a basic theory this is you need to think you need to think about the symmetry in which direction there is a symmetry and which direction you not you don't need to calculate a lot anything you need to calculate there so problem uh, 1.3 is just a calculation of moment of inertia tensor there so just xy component of so just an application of i x square plus y square and that formulas this is again uh, a calculation of i x y i x z i y z so if you don't know how to calculate this i x z i x y i z then please uh, please uh, open any book and see how uh, these are defined so this we already discussed this is again uh, starting from the basic definition then uh, this is theory what will be the number of degrees of freedom of the rigid body in d, d space dimension if you have 3 then it's 3 into 3 plus 1 by 2 uh, it was 6 and dimension is d then it's d into d plus 1 by 2 you can get this theory derivation in some standard books but if you don't just just make it in keep it in your mind uh, now it uh, will give it will go to a higher di a higher difficulty level just uh, Euler angles you know Euler angles uh, then uh, you know that uh, what uh, this uh, uh, Euler equations, the application of Euler equations will be there. So, I'm just cutting, insert a new slide. So, from starting from this 1.8, so that you need to do Euler equations. Any book, any book, but just keep a have a brief revision, then come moment of inertia ellipsoid. Remember, there was a moment of inertia ellipsoid or blah blah blah. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, so, see this uh, uh, this is a just concept from that. This is a theory, 1.9 is a theory. 1.10 is that Euler equations. This is also a theory, just application. The constant of motions and the equilibrium part. This is a very beautiful problem. All the theory and applications of Euler equations are uh, there. So they are giving you that Euler equation. And the interesting part is you did not need to remember this, but you did just uh, had a skill to apply that Euler equations. So these are beautiful this is this will be a little bit complicated but yeah can be done I see the solution so not only my solution people have and there are other solutions also discuss with friends these problems are very standard problems what we ask so we have answer keys solution we have but didn't discuss this part this non-inertial frame Coriolis force part. I think you, uh, this I leave you as a self-study. So this non-inertial, just a, so you get this non-inertial force part, Coriolis force part. Any book you have a quick revision and solve these problems. So there are many problems which are asked in this so 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 we have 
14 problems. So Coriolis force part, this non-inertial force part. So you do in a book. Will be good. That Klipner also we have. That will be good. But any other will be fine. So we had uh, the solutions. Most of uh, this problem have a solution. You have hints also. So step by step you will do this. So I leave this Coriolis force part on you, totally on you. Let's see if you can do anything on that. We don't have much time. That is the problem. I will try to. I will try to go through as much as I can. But well, let's see. So this is uh, all for today. This class. So next class will be central force. I forgot to add that slide, contact slide there. So from slide one, we can have a, that was your slide one. We discussed uh, this, I forgot to upload this. We discussed all this in our first class. So we have a contact to me data, contact slide. So you can WhatsApp me, you can email me, our Facebook page and Facebook group are there. All the videos are uploaded in this YouTube channel. So, okay. Bye bye for today. Just uh, keep giving me feedback how it's going. Please join uh, this uh, with uh, Google Classroom with this code IBLBIFL. Then we'll see what we can do, whatever we can do. I will be there with you as just as an aspirant. I know that uh, in the corona period, many people have lost their hopes and motivations. Let's uh, keep your motivation born again, reborn again. And let myself also get a little bit motivated. <laughs> Okay, so bye bye. My next class will be when uh, maybe tomorrow. I'll see, I'll, uh, I'll try to upload tomorrow, or I have an engagement uh, there. So if not, then maybe Tuesday. There may be a gap. I'll upload the slides and uh, I, homework. You have lots of homework, lots of problems. So just keep doing, keep doing, keep doing, keep getting motivated.